Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing great today. I'm Jan Smit and in this video I'm going to talk about beginner photography mistakes, but more importantly how you can avoid them. Many beginners make a lot of mistakes and it's not how many mistakes they make, but it's the mistakes they make that make them a beginner and not a professional. So, the first beginner mistake I see very often is Beginners, when they download an editor or something uh, on their desktop or on their cell phone, they start moving the sliders and then they discover the power that the ed editor can give them. And that results in them changing the contrast, changing the vibrance and everything a little overdone. And the next thing you know, you have a, uh, an image that is over edited and looks so overdone, it doesn't look realistic at all. So I would recommend editing your images and then go take a break before exporting them. Go take a break for a while and then come back and look at them again. And when the first impression you get is, well, these look a little bit overdone or maybe too uh, unrealistically good, well, readjust them and then maybe take another break. Go take a break, come back and if the impression you get now is they look better, then you can export them. But keep doing this until you, you're certain that the images aren't over edited. Because when you go take a break, your eyes can readjust to how the real life looks like. And it's not just used to your over editing. And then when you come back, you can, you can compare that to what you really saw in the real life. So I would really recommend doing that. And do not over edit your image. I, I understand some people have a style and that style might be over edit, uh, maybe very high contrast the image, um, very saturated images, but still every beginner can't have that style and I, I did that too when I started. I over edited my images but I realized that I'm over editing so now when I when I think I might have over edited my image, I go take a break and come back and look at them again. And then the second mistake is kind of the opposite of the first one and that is not editing your images at all. I would really, really recommend download an editor and start editing your images. Many beginners look at their image and then compare it to other photographers that do edit their images and then can't understand why it's maybe the same camera they have or I don't know but they compare the photos and then they can't understand why their image doesn't look as good as the other photographer's photo and that is because the other photographer is editing his image. I understand the camera's JPEGs looks really good and you might not think that editing is necessary at all but I really recommend editing your images because just taking a photo kind of just there's nothing personal to you but when you edit your images and you take them and give them something that reflects you yourself and that makes the image different from everybody else's and that makes an image yours so I, rec I would really recommend editing your images and adding your style and your creativity to the image and so a few editors I would recommend is if you're shooting from a, on a cell phone on a mobile phone I would recommend the Lightroom mobile app it's it's free and some of some of the features you can pay for but the free editor can do almost anything everything that the paid version can do and everything you need definitely so I'd recommend that for mobile users and then if you want to step up maybe Go for a desktop editor or a computer editor. Go for Lightroom Classic CC. It's the Lightroom, the desktop version of the Lightroom Mobile. And that is very, very, very good editor. I would say uh, the best right now, the best image editor, just for editing, not for manipulate, manipulating your image like Photoshop. Just plainly editing your image to make it just come to life and give it your style to make it your image so Lightroom desktop is a good very good uh, very good editor and then for a free uh, desktop editor or computer editor is Photoscape 
X. That is also free and it's definitely it has all the features you need to to just basic edit your image. So I recommend those editors and uh, Lightroom Mobile and Lightroom Desktop both support RAW. I'm not sure about Photoscope. That brings me to the next beginner mistake and that is not shooting RAW. I understand that many beginners might not know what RAW is at the beginning. They might see their camera have a RAW option and a JPEG option but they don't know what the RAW image basically is and then they open up that image in the in the computer's default image uh, app and then they see that the raw file looks very dull and low contrast flat uh, not vibrant at all and compare it to the jpeg and they can't understand well why would i use the the raw file if the jpeg looks so much better and they don't understand the benefits of shooting raw. It creates, it, it gives you way more freedom when editing. It gives you way more dynamic range. It gives you the ability to change your white balance afterwards. It gives you the ability to manipulate colors way better and not non-constructively. Um, so uh, go shoot raw and definitely uh, if even if you shoot raw and jpeg try to edit the raw file to look like the jpeg and this is kind of not a good practice but for a beginner i would recommend that even me i struggled so hard so much to edit my raw file to just look as good as a jpeg never mind looking better than a jpeg and that's because the raw format of some cameras might be hard to to edit to look good so I would recommend shooting RAW and JPEG and comparing them and try to edit your RAW like your JPEG and if you want to add adjustments then afterwards you can have way more freedom when 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 editing the RAW file even I shoot RAW and JPEG most of the time just not with wildlife photography or bird photography because that creates another file that has to be written onto my SD card and that creates another file that can help fill up my buffer which is not good and so I only shoot raw when I'm shooting wildlife to free up my buffer and then that brings me to the next one and that is not thinking of composition many beginners when they start off they might not know any compositional rules or just just want to take images but they want to take good images but they don't think of composition so many beginners go when they saw see something beautiful they go closer and just take an image from the angle they first saw that subject and that is many times most of the time not the best angle to shoot that subject from so i would recommend first looking for elements around your main subject. Look for elements that support your main subject, that enhance the feeling that your image creates, that enhances your overall image and, and lifts up your, your main subject. And so I would recommend looking for elements around your main subject and then try to compose those inner elements and uh, position them in a good way in your image to support your main subject. And then another thing is angle, change your angle or perspective. Maybe most subjects look very good if you shoot them from eye level. So please, if you shoot like pets or something, it looks so not professional if you just take them from above and not eye level. So if you're shooting pets, anything, go down and get low and get, get to their eye level even if they don't have eyes like a flower, maybe go lower. Sometimes a top-down shot looks good, but most of the time you want to be very flat and eye level with that thing. And it also um, enhances your depth of field, if I can use that word. Um, you can emphasize your depth of field by going down low because the, the piece of uh, focus would be a smaller part in your image and therefore creating the misconception that you actually have a shallower depth of field than you actually have so go down low and shoot from the perspective 
of the animal or any subject that you're shooting it creates kind of a feeling that you are that subject but still you are not directly that subject you are only looking at it although you are seeing what what it sees from his perspective so go down low and then another tip or beginner mistake i see is uh, the compositional framing this time sometimes beginners when they just start out they start framing the subject in the dead center of the frame and that's not the best angle to uh, best way to shoot most subjects um rule of thirds is a very very good rule and it always works and i didn't uh, invent the rule of thirds but the rule of thirds works like this you you can divide your frame up into uh, three the the horizontal part into three parts by splitting it into three parts equally and the vertical uh, the vertical part of your frame you can split also split that into three with two lines horizontal and two lines vertical and then position your subject on one of those lines and here's a very big tip if your subject is looking this way position the subject on this this side of the frame meaning on this in this one line if the subject looks up it might look good if you can position it on the downside so that your subject always looks into the frame remember this always make your subject look into the frame there are very specific scenarios where that might not be the ideal way to frame your subject but that's very rare occasions and most of the time you want to frame your subject so that your subject looks into the frame and that creates uh, when your viewer first looks at your image it uh, he looks at the subject first and when it when um, your viewers see the subject and they see the subject is looking into the photo they want to see what the subject is looking at and then you have your subject guiding your viewer through the image and that is so powerful if you can create a uh, uh, control where your viewer looks in the image and if your subject is dead center you have a, a subject in the middle your viewer looks at the subject and then there's equal dead space all around the subject which isn't really ideal because then your viewers eye kind of get lost kind of get lost in in the in the frame and don't really have a guide uh, not a real guide but a kind of a guide of where to look so always put your subject to make your subject look into the frame guiding your viewers eye through your image creating a very very powerful and good image and then another uh, mistake i see is viewers cropping off weird parts of their subject so many photographers call this border patrol or border uh, edge control some patrol i mean and that is basically they all mean the same thing and that is look at the edges of your frame and see if something weird creeps into your frame or creeps out of your frame so never cut your subject uh maybe cut the elbow off or just cut the hand off or just leave so little headspace so a few rules basic rules is always leave a big chunk a decent chunk of head space above your subject's head that just creates a, a nice feeling of your subject is not forced into the image it almost creates a feeling that you forced your subject into the frame although that is definitely not true and then also make sure you don't cut off a hand or don't cut off the feet you can either crop or frame at the hips and up but don't frame them from the legs or from weird spots between the the heaps or down below the feet so always leave a decent bit of uh, space below the feet also maybe something go cr comes into the frame so make sure not none of uh, nothing of your subject goes out of the frame or something else that might be a little distracting comes into your frame so if you're shooting trees or something make sure there's not one odd branch that goes out of your frame 
or something that comes into your frame from another subject or something that can distract your viewer. So always make sure that your your edges are clear and clear of something creeping in or creeping out of your frame. That's just a good tip and it gives a, a feeling of thought that you actually thought of composing your image and framing everything and making sure nothing comes into your frame or goes out of it that looks weird. And then another very big tip I would give you now uh, because of a mistake I see often and that is viewers not really understanding or knowing their subject so new photographers did I just say viewers that meant to be photographers don't always know their subject photographers uh, new photographers don't always know their subject they don't really know how their sub how their subject acts to reacts to certain things and acts in general or maybe a common behavior of the subject for wildlife photographers this is very very important to understand and know your subject so if you are shooting birds know how your bird will react to certain stuff happening that will just help you predict where your subject might be and how your subject might be posed in in the next few seconds and that can really help you create very good images that you might not have gotten if you didn't understand what your subject will be or will do if you're shooting pets understand that uh, they don't look good from above there's a good uh, tip from previous the angle that you're shooting at the, the perspective that you're shooting from and always uh, don't dogs like to be active so you would have to be prepared for that Dogs might not sit still for long, so you only have a small chunk that you have to shoot your subject. Humans, they might be uncomfortable, so you would have to learn to make them comfortable in front of a camera. So these are all tips that that will help you if you know your subject. So every photographer has to know their subject, even uh, just a landscape photographer. They have to know their subject, they have to, have to know what light is the best, they have to know what time of the day would be the best, they have to predict how a sunset will look, they have to predict where they should be to get the optimal image. So this all, it's, it's leading to the same point and that is know your subject. So this is just a big tip and that, that will help you eliminate a lot of, uh, just a lot of frustration when trying to shoot something and you can't get the image you want but the reason might be because you not know your subject and you don't know what it will do in the next few seconds to a minute or something just to know how you would just prepare yourself to get the correct image and the image you want so always learn your subject before you go shoot it then this is a very big tip and this is learn your camera settings so always understand your camera this might take very very long i understand that and yes this might take very long your camera have many many settings and many settings that might be unclear at first so i'd really recommend doing research as much as you can understanding your camera understand what every every setting does and this will only help you get the image you want and get every little bit out of your camera that it can deliver literally every bit if you understand your settings and you can really optimize your camera for what you are shooting so if that might be the reason that you think you should upgrade your gear your your camera isn't good enough but the reason might be because you're not using the correct settings you're not optimizing your camera for your subject that you're going to shoot so really understand aperture shutter speed iso i have a video i will link right up here to explain uh, camera settings camera basics and i will bring out a part two in the future so keep your eyes open for that then also go uh, out of auto don't use full auto yes uh, you don't have to go full manual 
but just get out of the auto settings don't use automatic definitely don't use automatic maybe sport for some beginner that's not totally new but just sorting out so maybe sport is a good setting in in many cameras especially for wildlife photography and just outdoor photography most of the time is sport a good a good setting but from there i would really recommend going to aperture priority going to shut speed priority program i don't know i personally don't understand program that much but i know that it won't benefit my photography in any way because i can get every little bit out of my camera using aperture priority most of the time so i use aperture priority when shooting birds and 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 uh, uh, wildlife in general and i will do a video on that in the future but um i sometimes use manual if necessary if i have to go do long longer exposures and stuff like that manual but go use aperture shutter speed and manual those that use those modes get out of full auto and then that brings me to another tip which is doing research about your camera go watch youtube beginners sometimes don't watch enough youtube they watch youtube on gear yes on new cameras maybe but that's because they don't understand their own camera good enough to get good images so youtube is always your best friend go do research go watch youtube hours and hours look up on how camera settings work how camera settings influence your image how to get better images with better camera settings just go watch enough youtube and even more than enough youtube to just understand your camera and that will help you just not with your camera settings but with technique overall and just basic shooting methods and all of that that takes experience to build up so it's either you take a few years building that experience or you take 10 minutes in a very experienced photographer's video and you can build up most of that experience i would say just by watching a 10 minute youtube video so youtube is free go go watch as much as you want and even more so and that brings me to my own channel please please go down there press that like button go subscribe ring the bell so that you can get notified when i post again and share this video i'm sure there's other beginner photographers that you know that are just starting out and this video might be very useful for them so let us help each other yes then that brings me to my last and a very very important tip and mistake beginners make and that is thinking that your gear is your limitation yes i understand gear can be a limitation but gear isn't everything experience and skill and all of those things are way way more important than gear so i, I know a lot of beginners they go on google they research the best new camera gear the expensive lenses new lighting setups and tripods and all those not unnecessary things but really they aren't necessary for a beginner that ha might not have a very big budget and so really don't think that gear is everything this can really demotivate you if you see your camera is not a good enough and you're always researching better gear never research i don't say never research better gear know that what gear can do and know what your camera is capable of and know where your camera is in what is possible in with with newer cameras but rather spend money on don't don't always buy new gear that is not what's making you not get the best images you can skill and experience and all of those things are going to have a way bigger impact on your photography and image quality at the end and it's not going to be your camera gear so don't always research new camera gear and just wish that you can afford them or just have the best camera in the world because that won't help you that much if you don't have experience and skill and just overall knowledge of your camera 
rather spend that money on courses, online courses. I know some say that online courses is, is good. I have not taken any online courses yet. And even I would say, I would recommend this even more than online courses is go travel if your photography uh, depends on, on good location. So wildlife, landscape photographers, all of, all of those types of photographers, go travel, spend your money rather on traveling. And maybe if you're a portrait photographer or something like that, spend your your money on maybe hiring other uh, models and build up a portfolio, build a website, all of those things rather than buying you new gear. You can save yourself a lot of money by not buying the best camera and not having money at all to go travel or to go build yourself more experience. and. I would recommend buying a good lens. So if you're not having, if you don't have a good lens right now, maybe get yourself a good lens. But don't upgrade your camera. But don't upgrade your camera if, until you really, really. I mean, yeah, you know that camera. You can say where every button is in your sleep. Then yes, if you have the money and it's not even a, a question, go upgrade your camera. But don't if you don't have the money don't think that your camera is going to get you better images your experience and your skill is going to be, get you better better images than the best photographer the best uh, cameras but with without experience so don't obsess over gear and rather go out and shoot so this brings me to the end of my video so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video have fun shooting.